guys welcome to my channel if this is your first time here welcome thank you for stopping by and if you're a returning subscriber thank you for sticking around and being with me so if you have reached to this point of the video i would like to tell you to take a moment stop and subscribe because you watch my video yeah you like it but you're not subscribed why why so from the title of the video, you already know what I'll be talking about today. Five things that I've learned in my Christian journey. Not that I've stopped learning. What I've learned so far is not just limited to these five things. You know, I'm still learning, I'm still growing, and I'm still glowing. So without no further ado, let's get into it. Christianity is a school that you cannot graduate from. It's like from the moment you believe in God, you accept Christ as your Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. It is a journey that you have started and you would keep going until, you know, Jesus comes and takes us home. And that takes me to my point number one. I feel like the word of God is not, it's not emphasized the way it's meant to be. As a believer, your life is based on the Bible. It's based on the word of God. The word of God is so important that even God used the word to create the world. Exactly. And that is why it's important because it gives life. I was reading my Bible one day and I saw something that blew my mind. If you don't mind, I would like to read. So, you know, when Satan went to go and tempt Jesus and he was like, turn this stone into bread. And then this was Jesus' reply. He said, he answered, the scripture says, bread alone will not satisfy, but true life is found in every word that constantly goes forth from God's mouth. Then you now see in John 6, 36, it says, The Bible alone gives eternal life. Human efforts accomplish nothing. And the very word I have spoken to you, they are spirits and they are life. And then when you think about it, the word of God is spirit and is life. Hmm. So you are trying to tell me that this word of God, this Bible that we are just holding, like, is simple, is life in itself. And that is beautiful. God understood the essence of the word. That is why he was able to create with the word of God. As a believer, your word is important. Whatever you say is important. So by the time you... One thing I learned from my uh, mentor is that if you can find it in the word, you can have it in your word. And I was like yo that's that's something and it's true because if you go to the word of god and you see what all god has said to, to you and about you as a believer he said that you are treasured he said that you are his masterpiece you know all those things that you have said by the time you are proclaiming it proclaiming it there's this it brings life to you as a person you start building your self-confidence these things are you know even life and death is in the power of the tongue the Bible understands. The Bible understands. Faith comes from hearing and hearing the word of God. The enemy is trying to keep it with the Bible from all Gen Z's so that if you don't read the word of God, you don't understand what God has done for you and you will not be able to walk on this earth knowing that my Jesus has done it. And it's not fair. It's not fair. Another part or another sector under this word of God is that, you know, as a believer, some people say, I don't understand how God speaks. I don't hear God. Let me tell you something. God is always speaking. God speaks every day. But the thing is that we don't understand his words because we don't know his voice. And that's why you have to dwell in the Bible. You have to dwell in the word of God. You will understand when God is talking to you. You'll be able to discern, oh, is this God's voice I'm hearing? Or is this the enemy's voice? You'll be able to tell because there is a way God speaks to his children and then there's a way the devil will speak to you. This leads me to my point number two. People do not understand this because people do not understand that friendship with the Holy Spirit is very simple. You know, if Jesus was still on earth here, probably he would not be in Nigeria. Like, you and I know that Jesus will not be in Nigeria. He will probably be maybe Jerusalem, anywhere, but shall not Nigeria. And then those of us that have not renewed our passports, those of us that don't have passports, I will not be able to have access with him. That was why when Jesus was leaving, Jesus said, I will send you a comforter. Mm. 
a comforter. We really need a comforter because you see this world? You see this world? You see this world? <laughs> comforter was needed. The Holy Spirit is not wind. The Holy Spirit is not fire. Though he moves through this, but he's not. The Holy Spirit has a personality. He's the third person in Trinity, basically. He's someone you can relate with. And friendship with the Holy Spirit is very important because the Holy Spirit is there always with you. He's by your side, whether you like it or not. And that's one thing you should know. Now, you know how you would normally relate with your friend, you know, when you want to gist, you have that person you go and gist with. That's who the Holy Spirit wants to be for you. He wants to be that friend. It might sound crazy when they say, talk to the Holy Spirit. They literally mean, like, talk to the Holy Spirit. The way I'm talking right now, talk to him. Like, just say, Holy Spirit, my day went really well and I'm so happy. You tell him everything that happened. That is how he wants. He wants to hear your voice. That's it. I have this story here. There was a time I was having a test, an oral test. And normally how the test goes is that you call a number. The lecturer will ask you a question and you answer. And my normal number is eight. Anything, eight. That's a lucky number. So I was in class and I was like, Holy Spirit, I don't want to work with my lucky number today. I want it to be your lucky number, your number, basically. And then, you know, the person before me was answering, and I was like, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, I beg. And then I heard nine, and I'm like, nine? He said nine. Like, he didn't even shout. He's a gentle spirit. And I answered nine, and that test went really well. I want you to involve him in the little details of life. The third thing I would like to talk about is... A lot of us, Gen Z's, we don't like to pray because we don't know how to pray. Growing up, nobody tells you that prayer can be the simplest thing ever. Prayer is communication with your father, with your daddy. Some of us like to start prayer with in Jesus' name, in the mighty name of Jesus, Heavenly Father, King of Kings, Lord of Lords, the I am that I am, God Almighty, the one who sits on the throne, the one that is at the right hand, the El Shaddai, the one who divided the rivers, <laughs> I'm not saying it's bad. That's how you like to pray. Please, is good. You can pray like that. You can call him all the names. You can exalt him. See, God is your daddy. You can just go straight to the point. Basically, don't waste your time. Because God, before you even talk, God, God already knows what you want to say. He wants you to call him daddy. Like, the simplest thing is prayer and we don't know. Normally, saying God, I beg, God, please, is prayer. We don't know. And in Nigeria, we can say God, I beg, like, 10 times in a day, we have said God, I beg. So it's not just you talking, talking, talking. You have to give God the chance to, to speak. But I have learned from prayer that patience is built in the place of prayer. Like, you need to know God's opinion on something, and you pray. If you cannot sit down and wait and listen, it will be tough for you. You feel like God is not talking to you. He's talking. It's just you that don't have the patience to sit down and listen to him. The other part of prayer is praying in tongues. Mostly, I've heard this from believers, that why are you praying in a language you don't understand? That you are saying rubbish. If you know that you are part of those people, please stop. How do you say we are praying rubbish? The Holy Spirit is praying for me. You're saying it's rubbish? Ah. Eh, I'm sorry, yo. As a believer, I would encourage everyone to, you know, ask the Holy Spirit to give you the entrance to pray in the Holy Ghost. Because, you know, there are some times that words cannot carry you. You need the Holy Spirit to come and intervene, to come and take it. Because why do we pray in tongues? We pray in tongues because when we don't have those words, you know, you're looking for those words to say. So the Holy Spirit helps you to pray with groanings. With groanings, that's why he's there to help you to pray. Because, I mean, you go to a church, they give you a prayer point, And then they say, pray, pray in the Holy Ghost. And then, you see, this is not to be before. Like, I, that was, I didn't know how to pray in tongues. So, when I'm done praying, the prayer points they're giving now. Looking at everybody, I'm saying, God, I thank you for my life. God, I thank you for everything. Because I don't I don't know how to pray in tongues. Like, bro. By the time I learned, I, I learned that it edifies you as a believer. I think this is why people say, 
praying the Holy Spirit is rubbish because you don't understand what you are saying. Yes, your brain is telling you you are saying rubbish. You are saying rubbish. But faith, that's where faith carries you because we know that this is a heavenly language. But this is when the Holy Spirit prays for you. And the Bible says that if you want to understand this praying in tongues, you can. The next one on the list is... It is very important for you as a believer to be surrounded by friends with the same values, with the same mindset, with the same goals. Especially if you are someone that just, you know... You're just really new in the faith. You just really accepted Christ, and you're trying to stay away from some from some things. You're trying to, you know, grow. You would need people that will be there to help you grow, because as I said, we need people. This is a journey. It's not just something that you say, okay, I'll start today and I will end. No, you don't. Mm -mm. It's for life. You know, sometimes as human, dear, we know what to do. We know the things to do, but we just need to meet some people that would speak to us, that would help us, you know, understand your value. So to be able to talk to you in the line of where you are, there will be those friends that would pray for you, those friends that would encourage you. And I remember when I was in school and I wanted to be really intentional about God, I needed people that were around me. And then one day I was just working with this girl, oh, let's go for an evening, evening service. And she was just, you know, something, something happened. She just said something and I'm like, oof. I like this girl's mindset though. I like this girl's mindset. And I just went quickly and I just told God that please I would like this girl to be my friend. I never even told her. Like up to today. She doesn't know. We are friends today. Last thing on my list. The simplest definition is how a person lives their life. And we all have different lifestyles. So as a believer, you have your own lifestyle. You know, the Bible says, Behold, um, all things have passed away and all things have become new. Your lifestyle <laughs> becomes new and you have to accept it. You can't say, I'm a believer and there are some things you keep doing. Now, you see, I'm not telling you to stop. Because if it's like, I'm telling you to stop, it's not going to be easy. Because... You are doing it with human efforts, and that's where the Holy Spirit comes in. You know, the Holy Spirit is ready to work with you. If you give Him the chance, He would work with you. And those like those lifestyles that you are trying to drop, He will help you to drop. You know, when you are in the mirror you, and you are trying to adjust how you look, how you when you are reading the Bible, that's what the Holy Spirit does for you. The Bible tells you things you can say, things you cannot say. As a Christian, your lifestyle is to always dwell in the presence of God every day. I mean, the presence of God is with you because he said he will never leave us, so he's with you every day. But you need to think on things that are good. You need to, you know, maybe play gospel music, listen to uh, a preaching. You can read godly books. Doing these things helps you to focus your mind on God, helps you to focus on his love. With that, we have come to the end of this video contributions if you have questions you can just put it down in the comment section below and i will see you in my next video bye